What up, nerds? I'm Clay Cooper from Prep Expert. I've got two perfect scores on the SAT and one perfect score on the ACT. And today I'm going to teach you how to deal with histogram tables on both tests. In order to talk about a histogram table, it's important first that we understand what it means. Uh, so the histogram table, that's the term I use to describe a table like the one you see here on this page. In this table, what we have is a set of values indicated in table form. So this is really actually a data set. It's just a data set that the test makers aren't showing us, or at least they're not showing us all written out. Uh, it says a teacher polled his students to find out how many pets each of them owned. The students responses are shown in the table above. When you see a histogram table like this, most often what they'll ask you for are aspects of a data set or characteristics of a data set. Now, if you want to know more about these characteristics of a data set, like mean, median, mode, range, and standard deviation, uh, check out my other video on that topic. Uh, I explain it in depth, how to find the mean, the median, the mode, the range, and the standard deviation. In this video in particular, I'm just going to be explaining how you can find those when you're not actually shown the data set itself, you're just shown a histogram table reflecting the data set. So let's take a look. I know that the mean of a data set is the average of all the values in the set. The thing is, I don't have those values written out in this set. I'm just shown what they are in a table. The key to doing well on histogram tables is to be able to visualize what the data set would look like if it actually were written out. So in this particular table, the values are on the left and the number of times those values appear within the set are on the right. So again, let me repeat that. These values you see on the left are the values that actually show up in the data set. These numbers on the right are not in the data set. Instead, they are counts of how often each of these values on the left appears within the data set. In other words, the first row of the table tells me that there are 13 students that have zero pets. What that means is in my data set, I have 13 zeros to start with. So if I were going to type out the data set, it would look like this to start 13 zeros. Next, I have 11 ones. So I would then go into the ones one. And there are my 11 ones. Now, we don't really have to type out the whole table. In fact, that's usually not a good idea. The reason that I put this on screen is just so you can visualize how this table reflects this data set. Again, if you want to succeed on a histogram table, when they give you this table, understand that it reflects a data set that actually looks like this. We could go on and start with the twos and go all the way down to the eights, but we're not going to. The faster way to approach it is to understand how to calculate the important attributes of a data set, even when you're given only the table itself. So how would we calculate the mean of this data set? Well, I know that the mean is just the average, and that is the sum of the values in the data set over the number of values. So first of all, I'm going to start by figuring out how many values do I have in this data set? The way to figure out how many values total I have in the data set is to ignore what the values are and instead focus on how many students responded. So each of these numbers on the right represents a certain number of values that appear within the table. For instance, there are 13 zeros. Okay, well that means that if I add up all the numbers on the right, that will give me the total number of values in the set. So I'll add them up. 13 plus 11 is 24, plus nine is 33, plus seven is 40, plus seven is 47, plus two is 49. So it looks like the number of numbers in my data set is 49. Now, all I've got to do is find the sum of all those values. And you may be thinking, how on earth am I supposed to find the sum easily if there are 49 values in the data set? But I'll show you how. We don't have to write the data set out. Instead, we'll use a cool little trick. First of all, I know that there are 13 zeros in the data set. Now, the zeros aren't actually going to affect the sum of values, but we can still apply the principle. If I were going to add all those zeros out, it would look like this. Zero plus zero plus zero plus zero and so forth. There's a much simpler way to do it, though. Instead of writing out all 13 zeros and adding them up, I can just multiply 13 by zero. What do I get? Zero. And I do the same with the ones. I know that there are 11 ones in my data set. So, so to find the sum of all the ones, I just multiply one times 11, and I get 11. I know that there are nine twos in my data set. 
So to find the sum of those values, I just multiply 9 times 2, and that gives me 18. I know that there are 7 3s, so I multiply 3 by 7, and that gives me 21. And I could do this on down the line. And this will tell me what the sum of the values in the data set are. There are 3 5s, there's 1 6. I don't have to worry about the 7s, and there are 2 8s. So that gives me the sum of the 8s, gives me the sum of each value in the data set, and now I can add these up. Uh, 11 plus 18 is 29, plus 21 is 50, plus, plus 27 is 77, plus 6 is 83, plus 16 is 99. So it looks like we're going to have 99 over 49 as our mean. Plugging that into the calculator, we get 99 divided by 49, about 2.02. .02. So in this particular problem, if they were going to ask you about the mean, they would have to give you instructions on how to round it, or they would say which one of the, these values is closest to the mean. But we just calculated the mean super easily using a histogram table. We didn't have to write the whole table out. Instead, we understood how it worked and took advantage of that. So let's take a look now at the median of the table. How are we going to find the median of a data set that's not shown? If you recall from my previous video, the median of a data set is the number that is in the middle of the data set. In fact, that's what median means. But we've already determined there are 49 values in this set. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out if I have a data set with 49 values, which number value is in the middle? Well, I can split that evenly into two halves of 24 with one in the middle. So it looks like my 25th value will be the middle value. In other words, these are values number one through 24. This is value number 25. And then values number 26 through 49 of the second half. So the 25th value, when you place them in order, is my median. All right, now, how do I find that median without writing the whole data set out? The trick is to count from one end to the other. In other words, I know there are 13 zeros. So values one through 13 are all zero and so forth. So, numbers 1 through 13 are all 0. I know that there are 11 ones, so that's numbers 14 through 24. They're all ones. And then it looks like my 25th value will be a 2. Numbers 25 through 33 are going to be 2s, so value number 25 is in fact a 2. So again, I can count from either end until I get to the 25th value. You can do the same thing from the other end as well. If I were to start at the bottom, values 1 through 2 are 8s, value 3 is a 6, value 4 through 6 are 5s, value 7 through 9 are 4s, there's 7 3s, so that'll be values 10 through 16, and there are 9 2s, so that's values 17 through 25. So again, my 25th value is in fact a 2. So that's how we find the median of a data set when we're given only the histogram table. All right, so let's see. We've done mean. We've done median. Uh, our mean was 2.02. Let me fill that back in there. We've done mean. We've done median. Let's find the mode. Again, the mode of a data set is just the most frequently appearing value within the set. Remember, guys, in this particular histogram table, the values are on the left. The frequency with which those values appear is on the right. So which value appears most frequently? It looks like zero. So my mode then would be zero. Now what's the range of my data set? Again, just like a normal data set, the range is the highest value minus the lowest value. But again, now we're looking at the values themselves which are on the left. What's the highest value? Eight. What's the lowest value? Zero. So because these numbers on the left are the ones that actually show up in the data set, then the highest number on the left minus the lowest number on the left will be my range. In this case, that's eight. Finally, guys, standard deviation just tells me how spread out the values in a data set are. In order for the test makers to test you on standard deviation on a histogram table like this, they'd have to give you two different data sets. So again, the standard deviation tells you how spread out the values in a data set are. If we had a second data set here, let me draw one up real quick so we can look at it. If we had a second data set that was more spread out, then we could calculate or we could compare the two and figure out which one had a higher standard deviation. So for instance, if the values in this set were evenly spread across the spectrum, right? We have a lot of values at the top, we have a lot of values at the bottom, they're pretty evenly spread, a lot of values in the middle. So data set B on a number line would look pretty evenly spread out, right? Whereas data set A, almost half of its values are zero or one. Okay, the first 24 of 49 values are either 0 or 1. So we have a lot of concentration down here on this end, and there are other values in the set, 
But because the values are not as spread out in data set A, the standard deviation for data set A would be lower than the standard deviation for data set B. So one more time, the values in the second data set that I just made up are pretty evenly spread across the spectrum. We have 17 ones or zeros, we have 17, or excuse me, 14, seven sixes and eights. So the values are pretty evenly spread in B and that's why B has a higher standard deviation than A. A's values, half of them are concentrated at the low end. Uh, almost three quarters of them are concentrated in the lowest four numbers. So that's all you need to know to answer questions about a histogram table. That's all I've got for you today. Please don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful. You can also subscribe to Prep Expert's YouTube channel for other videos just like this one. In fact, we'd love it if you'd leave us a comment below this video. Let us know what you want to hear about in our next video. We might feature your suggested topic in the next video. You can also find a coupon in the description below that you can use for discounts on any of our products on our website, prepexpert.com. You can use that coupon code to get money off of a course with myself or another instructor, or you can sign up for tutoring if you'd prefer that. So until next time, keep working hard.